There's a lot to discuss about Watchmen, but the question I see come up the most about Moore and Gibbons' seminal work is what's the point of the pirate comic? And it's a good question too. First time you read Watchmen you might find the sudden change from 80s New York to a pirate ship a bit jarring. I know people even skip over these parts. But the mad angry beard masquerading as a man rarely writes anything for no reason. And that's what I wanted to cover today. And just to remind ourselves, we're introduced to the story of the Black Freighter in Chapter 3, The Judge of All Earth. A young Bernie sits reading a comic at the newsstand, owned by another Bernie, albeit an older one. Younger Bernie is engrossed in the comic, ignoring the hustle and bustle of the city around him. The story begins with a man at sea when his ship is destroyed by the Black Freighter. The dreadnought ploughs over him, throwing him under the waves. He awakens on an island, marooned and surrounded by dead and rotting crewmen. Alone he sets upon the gruesome task of burying them, all the while thinking that the Black Freighter was heading to his hometown where his family lived, a fate that he believes will see them butchered. He sets his sight on leaving the island, but the wood there is not suitable for building a boat. His mind flits back to his recently buried brethren, many of whom are bloated, filling with gas as they decompose. He fixes the corpses together and sets sail. Attacked first by gulls and then sharks, both attracted by the rotting corpses, he starts to drift. With it drifts his mind, until it snaps. He starts to talk to the dead shipmates until he finally reaches land. Spying a couple promenading along the beach, he decides to kill them, assuming they must have been conspirators with the Black Freighter's men. Propping up the woman's corpse on one of the horses, he makes his way to Davidstown. Reaching his old home, he rushed in to confront the pirates. He attacks a figure in the darkness before realising, to his horror, that it was his wife. His children stand by, watching in terror. He flees Davidstown, finding himself back on the beach. He spies the black freighter waiting. It had not sacked the town. Instead, it had been waiting for him, the only soul they'd ever wanted. He climbs aboard. So that's that. A story about one man's descent into madness. A dark story within a dark story. But one I think that is integral for understanding the series. One of the most interesting, albeit very cursory points about the tales of the Black Freighter is that it is a part of the Watchmen universe. It is a part of the cultural backdrop that adds depth to a world familiar to us, but with some stark contrasts. The end of issue 5 has an excerpt from the Treasure Island Treasury of Issues, which examines the series. The panels we see are actually only a handful of those in the series. We see parts of issues 23 and 24 of the critically acclaimed series. In a world where superheroes were real, those types of comics did not reach the levels of popularity that we'd recognise, instead tales about pirates became the best sellers. Interestingly, as the government was using superheroes, it did not support any censorship in comics like that had been seen from the Comics Authority. That's why the DC's Tales of the Black Freighter could showcase such graphic scenes right from its start in 1960. It was illustrated by a number of different artists, but it's the writer who is of more interest to us, Max Shea. It's a name you might be familiar with as it crops up a few times in the series. By the 80s, he's a well-known writer having penned many successful books and comics, with adaptations of his work also reaching the silver screen. One day though, he vanishes, with police investigations having no leads. In Chapter 7, the authorities announce they are closing the investigation. However, as readers we get to see Shay alive and well, talking to the artist Hiro Manish on an undisclosed island. Manish and Shay were familiar with each other, having worked together in the past. They have both been brought there to work on a top secret movie project. A project we know to be fake, a plan by Vite to get some of the brightest people in the world to work together. The project wraps up and the two celebrate in a secluded room on the boat together, whilst the others party on the deck. Hira asks whether Max's marooned character ever escapes off the island as their ship departs. Shay never gets to finish his explanation as he discovers a bomb just before it explodes, killing all aboard. What I think Shay would have gone on to explain was that the man did get off the island, but only found damnation, just as all of those who worked on Veidt's project did. Even under the guise of a film project, they were very aware that they were doing something unethical, like using a human brain to create the creature. However, for them, the ends justify the means. 
an approach that is very reminiscent of the actions of the marooned sailor. It's fitting that the doomed author's life mirrored his work. But it's not just the end of Shay that the tales of the Black Freighter were mirroring. There are a number of times where life in the Watchmen universe imitates art. For example, you have the maroon sailor eating a gull, immediately followed by Dan eating a drumstick on the next page. Or the sailor speaking to a carving of a woman he had clung onto whilst at sea, saving his life. I could not love her as she loved me. The writing merges with the scene of Laurie and John making love. John's withdrawal from humanity and emotions leave him incapable of matching Laurie's love for him. You also have the cops getting a tip off about Rorschach's whereabouts, with the detective mishearing it as Rorschach. On the previous page, the maroon sailor had been eating chunks of his raft, made from the body of a shark. And they're just some of the more obvious ones, but the series is full of it, where the comics and the real world are in sync. Some examples you may miss on first reading, like Bernie talking about the impending nuclear war, saying to watch the financial pages, those guys are going to make a killing. At the same time, the sailors' thoughts go to scavengers circling above, hungry. This is great writing, effortlessly blurring the lines between the two stories, and I think that the inclusion of the Black Freighter heightens that creative collaboration between Gibbons and Moore. One of my favourite pages is in Chapter 8, Old Ghosts, with the sailor's monologue over panels switching between his world and New York as Doomsday approaches. I think it shows the two really working well together and hitting their stride with Gibbon's work playing off Moore's writing. But the water's surface seemed as stone beneath my timber blistered soles and the ocean's depths refused to swallow me. When would my suffering cease? When would death deign to call upon me? Had his terrible shadow passed me by? It's passages like these that make Watchmen one of the greatest stories for me. So all that I've been through so far adds depth, colour and interest to the story, but it's not the real reason I wanted to make this video. You see, I've come across comments where people say they skip over Tales of the Black Freighter, and I think without reading it, you won't ever really fully understand Watchmen, and it's all to do with Adrian Veidt, Ozymandias. Veidt's story echoes that of the sailor, as we see the decline of a hero, at least as someone we initially see as one. The survivor sees himself as on a mission to save his family. Veidt sees himself on a mission to save the world from nuclear Armageddon. Both take extreme measures to see their plans to the end. The survivor killing innocent people to get to his hometown, whilst Veidt kills not only the people who worked with him, millions in New York and, most unforgivably, Bubastis. For the survivor, it's a madness that sees himself give in to those actions. For Veidt, it's a sense of grandeur and his own divinity that leads him to this. Where their stories differ though is in the ending, as Veidt's story ends earlier than the sailors. If you ignore the tales of the Black Freighter story, then Watchmen is quite open-ended on how it wants you to perceive Veidt's actions. However, including the Black Freighter makes things quite different. As far from saving his family, the survivor kills his wife and joins the ranks of the damned vessel. This suggests that Veidt too has led himself to damnation and will not be remembered like his heroes Alexander the Great and Ramesses II. And lastly I want to suggest one more link. Throughout Watchmen are references to Pale Horse, which in the universe is the name of a band, but the term also refers to the horse ridden by death in Revelations. And I looked, and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death. The graffiti and posters continue right up until Veidt's creature is unleashed on New York. In the aftermath, we see a sold out concert for Pale Horse littered with bodies as Death arrives. In Tales of the Black Freighter, we also see another pale creature, the shark who attacks the survivor. The survivor kills the shark and makes him part of his raft. He rides the pale shark as a steed in his journey to bring death to Davidstown. Just like Veidt bringing death to New York. Not convinced? Well in Veidt's own words, he dreams of swimming towards a hideous... something. And that he struggled on the backs of murdered innocents. I think from that you can definitely surmise that hideous something is a black freighter and that struggling on the backs of innocents sounds very much like a raft made of rotting corpses. He is looking through the eyes of the survivor, perhaps on his journey to realising the monster he has become. 
As I said, without the Black Freighter, you would miss Moore's judgement on Vite's actions. With it though, it is clear that you are not supposed to side with Vite or his actions. It's inferred that the potential release of Rorschach's journal would bring about Vite's demise, dragging him down from hero to monster, possibly bringing about war too. Violence only brings more death and destruction. But what do you think? What did I miss?